Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome back to my channel. As promised in my latest video, I'm going to share my 2024 wishlist for you. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to keep watching. I will stick to the same categories as last year, so let's start right away with ready to wear. Number one on the ready to wear list is that caramel Chanel cardigan from the Coco Neige collection that I've seen on our trip to Paris back in November. Since then, this piece was living rent free in my head, but of course it was no longer available when I asked for it in December in the boutique in Vienna. My essay tried to get it from another boutique and just one day before New Year's Eve, she notified me that she managed to order it. So if everything goes well and the size will fit, I might be able to cross off the first piece of the list already very soon. Fingers crossed, I will for sure keep you updated on that. Alright, on to the next piece. Last year I had that totem silk PJ set on my wish list, and I did get it in a mixed combo, so I got the long trousers in black and the ivory shirt. But somehow I feel like I'm missing the summer version of the trousers, so I've been thinking of getting the shorts too for quite some time. I think I would like to go for ivory this time, so that I have one tone in tone set, but We'll see if I might change my mind spontaneously once again, as I did last year when I got the contrasting set, which was definitely not planned. I feel like these shorts would be the perfect lightweight summer staple piece. The next ready to wear piece is something that I already had on last year's wish list, but did not end up getting. I'm talking about the Totem Cable Knit in Off-White. I already have one in Caramel too that I really enjoy wearing, so I thought it would be a good idea to also add it in white. This is such a nice knit, not too thick and not too thin, so that you can basically wear it all year round. So I still do think that it's a good idea to get it in another shade. I have just one rule that I would like to stick to when it comes to that piece and that is to not pay full price. As I also got the other one for a pretty good deal, I'm not ready to pay full price for this one. So let's see if I will be lucky and if I'll be at the right place at the right time to find this one too. Another knit that I also already have, again in caramel, is the Kate Esmeralda knit, which I also really like and which I would also like to get in white once again. One could discuss if it wouldn't have been better to just get one type of knit in caramel and the other one in white, but it's too late anyways as I already own this one in caramel. But one can never have enough good knits, right? So we'll also keep this one on the list once again. Same rule applies here. Also this knit I got for a very good deal last year. So again, I will look out if I will find this one too in sale. Next up, this is slowly becoming a bit like a tradition. I like to get one good designer jacket per year to slowly build up a good staple collection. In 2022, I got my beloved Celine jacket and in 2023, I got a very nice coat from Joseph for my boyfriend. And at the end of the year, I then also found a very nice Max Mara coat that I've shown you in my latest video. So I feel like some warmer puffy winter jacket might be a good next addition. I've tried on that white Prada knit down jacket, which I really like but I'm not so sure about it yet because it's quite logo heavy. Not sure if I would still get this now as spring is basically around the corner so it would probably be better to wait for the next autumn winter season and then see what will be on my mind then. Maybe I should also go for a bit darker tone. I've been eyeing this embroidered to temp jacket lately but I also feel like it's a little bit of a trend piece so I'm also not so sure about this one yet but it's definitely something that I have my eye on. Or maybe I will also just go for another Celine jacket. You can definitely not go wrong with that. We definitely have a couple of good options. All right, let's continue with my favorite category, which is handbags. Hard to guess, I know. I do have to say that I already have a pretty extensive collection with solid classics and I should probably downsize a bit, but there are still a couple of handbags on my wish list. I'm definitely trying to stay away from Chanel a bit and focus more on brands that I do not have in my collection yet. So what is still missing in my collection is an Hermes bag. And as we all know, I was not so lucky last year, so we can pretty much take over all the models from last year's wish list to this year's. However, the specifications have slightly changed. In in 2023, I had a black Birkin in a 25 or 30 size with gold hardware on top of my bag wish list. I still did not manage to get any appointment to finally be able to try the bags on, so I'm still not sure about the size, but I do have the feeling that the 30 might probably be a better choice than 25, as the 25 looks quite small. And also my color preference has changed, and I think I would now go for a tube instead of black. Don't get me wrong, of course I would still love to get a classic black bag, but I think it would almost be a little bit boring 
boring as a very first MS bag, especially as MS is known for doing the best colors. A tube is a very classic shade still and I only realized how much I enjoy wearing this color and how well it actually works with my wardrobe once I got my Kelly belt in a tube last year. So I think a Birkin 30 in a tube with gold hardware would be my current dream specification if I ever get the chance to voice the wish in an appointment, which are already booked out again until April. So to be realistic, my chances are not too high to get such a bag this year, but we'll see what happens and I will for sure let you know if there are any news on the MS side. Another MS bag model that just recently caught my attention is the 2424. I saw one on display at the boutique in Vienna recently in a stunning dark chocolate brown shade and I have to say I really like the style but it was not available to be sold back then. It was just there to sit pretty in the glass box. The only bag that they offered me back then is a 2424 in a very bright blue which is definitely not my vibe so I declined. If I come across a nice shade I would probably not say no and give it a try. The other two MS models that I already mentioned in last year's wishlist video and that I also still like are a mini Kelly or a Kelly pochette. Here I stick to my specifications from last year which would be Epsom Swift leather in a lighter neutral shade such as Nata Grey, Biscuit, Chai or Beton. Another brand that I might turn to in 2024 and which would be a new brand to me is Loro Piana. I do not own anything of this brand yet, but I really like their muted aesthetic. Some might call it quite luxury, even though I feel like this term had its time. I really like the extra line and I've been thinking of getting a pouch extra pocket L19 in a light beige leather version with gold hardware. I've also seen a cashmere version of this bag, which I think looks quite interesting and I actually like it in both colorways. It comes in a creamy white and a light gray version. And last but not least on the bag list, we have the Alaya Liqueur bag, which has been all over the internet in 2023. Around Valentine's Day, it was Chanel's heart bag that went totally viral, but I never really liked it because I feel like it looked a little bit tacky. I think the star bag that was released for the holiday collection was way cooler. The Alaya heart bag is definitely a bit more on the minimal side, which is probably why I like it. I'm not 100% sure about this yet, but somehow I feel feel like that this would be a fun addition to my collection that is definitely different from everything else that I have. I think I'd probably go for black or white. I also really like the burgundy version, but right after Christmas was over, I somehow suddenly lost interest in red again. I just kept seeing burgundy everywhere in November and December, and when you see something often enough, you just start liking it. But now as spring is approaching, I'm definitely leaning towards more neutral tones again. Always good to stick to what you truly like, which are the neutrals for me, and not get overly hyped by short-term color trends as it was with burgundy this season. Oh, and there's one more bag that is still crossing my mind here and then. It's the Chanel mini top handle bag, but this is something that would be easily replaceable with my black classic flap. Of course, the shape is different, but the purpose would be quite similar. So I think it's probably not the best idea to get it even though I still think that it's super cute. That's it for the handbags, let's talk about shoes. Honestly, I've never been a huge fan of ballet flats, but at some point the trend just got me after seeing them everywhere all the time. I just also started to like them at some point. My two favorite models are the classic Chanel ones and the Miu Miu ones. We've also seen the Alaya ballet flats a lot in 2023, but I think their shape is very specific. They do look a bit more modern and cool, but I'm not sure if they would actually look flattering on me. I would love to get the Chanel ones in the dark beige color that was released in 2023. However, it was a seasonal color that is not part of the classic collection and I didn't manage to find them in my size even though I was looking everywhere, literally. I really do hope that this color or at least something similar will come back soon as this definitely matches my light skin tone way better than the classic light beige. Lately, I've also been thinking about a silver metallic version but these are not part of any current Chanel collection so I would need to go and find them vintage. But I think it would be a quite nice statement piece and for spring, it would be really nice to pair with white, grey, beige shades, pretty much every creamy neutral as well as light blue denim. When it comes to the Miu Miu model, I like the ones in white and rosy satin. Not sure if I would be a fan of the rosy ones for too long as they might easily become a little bit too kitschy for me, so I think I'd probably go for the white ones. However, white satin is a very dangerous material when it comes to shoes. They probably get dirty in the minute you leave the house, so I think that the Chanel Ballet flats would probably be the better choice as these are made out of leather. And then we come back to Lor Piana once again. Very very old money aesthetic and you could also call them boring and they're for sure not worth the price but somehow I do like the summer charms loafers 
thinking of getting them in either a light beige or a light gray shade. Never tried them on yet, so I can't really tell if there's something for me, but I put them on the list for this year so that we can find out. I have another loafer variant on my wish list, but this time a more chunky and more wintry version, the Celine Margaret loafers. I've always stayed away from that type of shoe as I feel like it's more of a trend piece. And even though I like the look of them, I did never find any pair of the style that was not super uncomfortable. These shoes literally call for destroying your heels when you just look at them. But to my surprise, the Celine Margaret seemed to be quite okay. I tried on a pair of them recently and have to say they actually did not feel that bad. I mean, we still do not talk about comfort here as they're still quite stiff and heavy, so I'm really not sure about this, but I might give them a chance this year. As I started to enjoy the MS Orange sandals, I'm thinking of getting them in a white version, even though I said before that I feel like that the shade looks a little bit weird on me. It would be the perfect addition to complete my little Oran classic color collection, as I already own a pair in black and one in beige mastique. Let's see. I also really do like the Chypre, which I got in black, so if I come across a nice color, I might also not say no to these. And that's it for the shoes, let's come to jewelry. I would like to stick to my focus on fine jewelry again this year. As I did not manage to get the pieces that I had on last year's wishlist, there is not much change for this year, and we can pretty much take over the same pieces. I would still like to get the nice watch, and I'm open to a couple of options here. I'm still on the waitlist for a Rolex Datejust, and I asked for an update in December, but they could not, or maybe they they did not want to give me any information, so I have no clue when or if I will get that watch. When I was in the store, I've seen a super cute version with star-shaped diamonds on the dial. I really liked it, but I'm not sure if this is something that I would like for a very long time. Probably it was just the magic of Christmas season. But it really did look very special, and I've not seen this on anyone else before, so I definitely liked that. Then I would still be interested in a Cartier Panthère or a Santos. Santos I would definitely go for in steel yellow gold. I also like the Pantera in two-tone, but maybe it would be better to go for it in the full yellow gold version then, should I ever get both models so that they are not too similar. And I also ordered the Rolex in steel yellow gold, so all three watches would probably look pretty much the same then. The prices of these two Cartier models keep increasing, but I've also observed that they don't really hold the value very well, so it would probably be better to look out for vintage options. And if we're talking about vintage, I was thinking if it wouldn't be more fun to go Go a little bit more niche then and I was looking at some very nice AP Royal Oak models so I'm quite open and we'll see if I end up getting a watch this year but I'm actually not even sure if I would wear it that much as I used to wear my Apple watch day to day. All right let's continue with the next piece on my jewelry wish list. They say exceptions prove the rules so I have actually one custom jewelry piece on my wish list. I would love to get a classic Chanel pearl necklace and it's such a pity that Chanel doesn't do them with real pearls though. However, I feel like a Chanel pearl necklace is a very beautiful, classic, timeless piece to have. This version with the gradually sized pearls and the CC logo just looks a little bit more interesting than a completely normal classic pearl necklace like you would get it from Tiffany, for example. Especially as I already have a real pearl necklace with oval pearls, which I absolutely love and which looks way more interesting than the perfectly round-shaped ones. The question is just if the quality will be solid, but anyways, it's not available at the moment. I asked for it several times so we'll see. And of course I still do like the Cartier Love series, so the yellow gold ring and bracelet are still on my wish list. However, I would still not know which size to choose, as I do prefer the thin ring over the regular one, but on the other side I prefer the thicker bracelet over the thin one, and I think in combination it somehow looks weird if it doesn't have the same width. Something I've been thinking of lately is a pinky ring with diamonds. It would definitely be a little bit more fun and not so basic, obviously. The Justin Clue series is definitely nothing for me, because I find it, may I even dare to say, a little bit tacky. All right, let's come to the next category. And for accessories, I actually don't have many specific things on the wishes for this year. I've been eyeing this Louis Vuitton beanie lately, but I'm not sure if I really need that, as I actually don't wear beanies that often. I do have an Acne Studios beanie, but that's about it. So I do think that adding a second option would be nice. But we'll see, I leave that up to a spontaneous purchase. I also really like that Miu Miu scarf and headband combo. However, it's sold out everywhere, so I think chances are low that I'll get my hands on this set. I just missed it. Around Christmas, I was thinking of getting a white Chanel hair bow, but this was also sold out in a hot minute. I think it would still be a cute accessory for spring and summer, but let's see if I will come across it. And one more thing I was thinking of is a Goyard agenda cover in white. But here I also need to be honest with myself, I'm definitely more of a digital person, having all 
all my appointments and to-do lists on my phone or on my laptop and I'm actually not writing down much on paper. I do have the Louis Vuitton agenda and I feel like I do not use it enough. So I would rather see this more as a home decor piece, which is probably quite unnecessary then, but I still do like the look of it. And that's already the perfect transition to the last category on my wish list, which is home goods. I've recently come across this Louis Vuitton pillow, which has the same design as my boyfriend's scarf that I like to steal. I think it might be the perfect addition to my MS Avalon pillow, where I was considering to get just another one of the same design, but maybe it would just look a little bit more interesting if I had a different design with similar shades. I think that it could look pretty cool. Do you think it will go well together? Let me know in the comments. And the second piece that I added to my home wish list is something that would also make a very nice decor object, but with function. I'm talking about the Celine jewelry case in the Triomphe canvas. I got the hair comb in the leather case in the same design and I really do like the look of it. My current jewelry case is also slowly reaching its limits, so it would be nice to add another one and the colors would actually go pretty well together as my current jewelry case is beige. If I will go for this, I will for sure take the large size to get a decent amount of storage. The small one really doesn't fit much and is probably more designed for traveling. And that's it for my 2024 wish list. Well, I would say it's more for long-term wish list as let's be realistic, I will for sure not get all of those things just in 2024. Some of them are for sure not so easy to get and some of them are real investment pieces. If you're still watching at this point, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of my wish list and maybe you would even like to share what you're having your eyes on for this year. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and make sure to subscribe to my channel and activate the notification bell to not miss out on any upcoming ones. I wish you a lovely day and hopefully see you soon. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.